Hey guys, do you know what baptism is? Why is it so important and what is the difference between faith and baptism? Well, first of all, I just want you to know that my goal is not to fight with you here. I know there's a lot of Christians and different denominations that fight about all these things. And it just separates us even more and we forget that our fight is not against each other, but against the dark forces in the air. But my goal is to look at scripture, to look at what baptism is and its relationship to faith. This is going to be an interesting video, so let's get to it. Now, just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I want to welcome you to DLM Christian Lifestyle. My name is Daniel, and if you haven't subscribed yet, then please consider it and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos. Now, what is baptism? Well, it is one of the two ordinances that Jesus gave to us to the church before he went to heaven to God the Father. He says in Matthew 28 verse 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. So we, as the church, should preach the gospel, the truth in love. Number one, we should make disciples and then also baptize those disciples. Now you need to know that the day when you became a real reborn Christian, you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. God sent His Spirit to come and live inside of you. Remember John the Baptist said in Mark 1 verse 8, I have baptized you with water, but He, he's talking about Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So remember when Jesus went to the Father in heaven, the disciples didn't really know what to do, and then they started to pray. And then on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came on them. And in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12, we read, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink. So on that day when you really became a real Christian, you received the Holy Spirit, you became part of the body of Christ, the family of God. And we are brothers and sisters in Christ because we have the same spirit in all of us. Black, white, brown culture, it doesn't matter with all the racist things going on in the world. We Christians, we're different. I am not a white Christian. I am a Christian first that happens to be white. Do you get what I'm saying here? This is the amazing thing about being a Christian, having God spread in us, and we are a body of Christ, a family in Christ. So what is the baptism with water? It is the reenactment of the baptism by the Spirit. When you read Scripture and you see that Jesus Christ died for you, when you accepted it, it's not just Jesus who died for you, but you died with Christ, your old nature, the person you used to be who lived in sin, that person, Dan, Daniel, that Peter, that Susan, that person died with Christ on the cross. Romans 6 verse 11 says, So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive in Christ Jesus. So first, when you are baptized, you are put under the water, meaning it shows, symbolizes that you died with Christ. Romans 6 verse 4 says, We were buried therefore with Him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So remember, when you are baptized, it symbolizes you die with Christ. And then when you come out of the water, it represents that you are spiritually reborn, newness of life, a new creation. Remember, before you were saved, you were spiritually dead because of your sin. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, And you were dead in your trespasses of sins, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, 
following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. And we were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. The word baptism means to emerge. So you, under the water, die with Christ. Rise from the water, rise with Christ. It shows how God changed you as a person. You were dead spiritually, and now He raised you and gave you spiritual life. Colossians 2 verse 12 says, Having been buried with Him in baptism, in which you were also raised with Him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised Him from the dead. When you are baptized, you openly say to the world that you are now a real reborn Christian, that you've been born again. You turned away from your old sinful lifestyle and you turned to God in newness in life. A new spiritual relationship, a loving relationship between you and the living God. So let me say this clearly. Baptism illustrates your death, burial and resurrection with Jesus Christ. And baptism with the Holy Spirit happens inside of you. God changes you as a person, inside. It's a miracle that only God can do. And then baptism with the water is the outside testimony of what happens to you inside. So it is associated with your salvation and, very importantly, baptism is an act of obedience because God said that we have to be baptized when we come to faith. First, you believe in God, you testify it with your mouth, you ask Him to forgive you and to come and change you and to make you a new person. So He justifies you and He gives you the Holy Spirit. This is regeneration. And then you have to be baptized. The order right through the Bible is very clear. It is not first baptism and then you get saved. No, it is always first. You hear the gospel, you accept it, and then you're baptized. Remember, Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them. First, disciples, then baptize them. Acts 2 verse 41 says, so those who received His word were baptized. Again, first you receive the word and then you are baptized. In Acts 16 verse 14 we read, one who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened our heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized and her household as well. So first you hear God's word. God opens your spiritual eyes and, and understanding to understand the spiritual truth. Then you accept it. You accept Christ into your life and then you are baptized. Now, if you're a new Christian, I urge you to get baptized as soon as possible out of obedience and then focus on growing spiritually, this journey of sanctification. You know, there is nothing that can compare to a living relationship with an almighty God, the only God. There's nothing I can compare to that. A spiritual relationship in truth where you live in Him, He in you. You are His child. He is your Father. And He leads you in this life. It's not just, you just don't become a Christian just so you can go to heaven. No. It's that everything changes the moment you become a real Christian. Everything opens up. You see the world for what it really is. To live in the Spirit is something else. Normal people who are unsafe cannot understand this because they don't have a spiritual nature in them. They are spiritually dead. So they don't understand the things of God because they don't have the Spirit. And you can only worship God in spirit and in truth. John 4 verse 24 says, God is Spirit and those who worship Him must 
worship in spirit and truth. Now, if you want to know more about this new spiritual nature, and what is the difference between your soul and your new spiritual nature, then please watch this video here and I'll see you there. And remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to